Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Uh, welcome back to the next lecture on inorganic chemistry of life, principles and perspectives. Let us get a bit of recapitulation of what we have looked at in the past few uh, lectures. So, what I have uh, uh, talked to you, hopefully you got impressed on that, is that the inorganic element or species should be a part of the biological system. Number two, it is exhibiting a function. Number three, concentration of the elements are important the of the essential trace and essential ultra trace elements. Higher concentration is a problem which is called toxicity, lower concentration is also a problem which is called deficiency. We have looked at all these. The, so, there is a certain level of concentration of each of these uh, ultra trace as well as trace essential elements to be present to have a healthy life of. Uh, any life being, it could be human or other. So, that is another aspect. The third is only certain elements have been uh, picked up by the nature, not entire 118 elements of the periodic table. The reasons probably could be not just the concentration of these present in the earth crust, rather their coordination chemistry properties, their uh, thermodynamic properties like stability, crystal field stabilization energies their kinetic properties like kinetic controls, reactivity, liability, etcetera. So, therefore, the uh, coordination chemistry, liability uh, and the stability, these are some of the important terms which I will be covering a bit later, uh, one or two uh, lectures from now. So, I will be uh, covering that. Okay. Now, so having said there are, uh, uh, I also have explained to you in the previous lecture absorption. So, absorption uh, example I have taken was the iron. So, iron absorption by lumen from lumen to the intestine from the intestine to blood. Okay. So, when uh, this kind of thing happen it is not that only one element is absorbed, we have several elements which are absorbed simultaneously. So, in such a case there could be uh, a positive kind, positive kind of an interaction there could be a negative kind of an interaction between element x with respect to the element y or with respect to element z. Uh, uh, assuming that element x, y and z are being absorbed. So, let us say there are 3 or 4 or several elements are absorbed by the body, then when they absorb there is a inter uh, interactions. These interactions can be negative, these interactions can be positive. So, what is negative, what is positive? So, negative is as follows. Let us say when the element x is taken more and more by the tissue, the y is taken less and less by the tissue. So, one concentration of x is increasing means concentration of the y is decreasing. Such a kind of thing is called what I am referring as a, a negative uh, interaction and this has a name in the literature which is called antagonism. So, x increases, y decreases the absorption levels that is called antagonism. Now, the second uh, possibility which you can easily guess is that x increases y also increase. So, that means x and y both the concentrations increase parallel together. Okay. So, that is referred as synergism. So, antagonism synergism. Now, this we are talking about two elements, but there can be several elements which are uh, uh, taken up. And we have seen totally there are, there are almost about a dozen elements which are uh, ultra trace and ultra trace elements. So, that means all these trace and ultra trace elements can be in dynamic equilibrium. They can be competing with something either in a positive way or in a negative manner and that is what is shown in this particular. So, please kindly have a focus at this particular slide and let us take one example. Take copper zinc copper and zinc, there is a line, uh, a, a solid line connecting this and there is an arrow from copper to zinc. What does this mean? This means 
as the concentration of the copper increases the concentration of the uh, uptake of the concentration of the zinc decreases and this is what is antagonistic. Now, what is the, the reverse? The reverse is a, a broken line arrow that means as the uptake of zinc is increasing concentration of the uptake of zinc is increasing the concentration of the copper is not so much affected there is a little difference is there. So, that ex is explained by broken line and solid line. So, solid line means they are coupled strongly the weak line means they are coupled weakly uh, these uh, the broken line and arrow direction means the uh, from left to the right towards the arrow that means the one which is antagonistic into that direction. So, copper to zinc. So, similarly you can see uh, silver to copper. So, as the concentration of the silver keep increasing by the organism taking the copper gets decreased. Similarly, cadmium uh, uptake increases that will affect the copper uptake. You take another example zinc versus iron. So, zinc increase will affect the iron, iron increase will affect the zinc equally well. Okay. So, like that you can see all these kinds of a uh, thing. So, uh, another other just let me give one example for the synergistic problem. So, synergistic for example, as you increase the copper uh, the as the organism takes more and more copper uh, salts or copper ions into the body what happens? The iron uh, the hemoglobin is increasing. So, the hemoglobin that means iron uptake is increasing. Okay. So, the iron uptake is increasing in this. Okay. So, therefore, we have seen uh, antagonistic parts, we have also seen synergistic part. So, copper iron relation is synergistic, copper zinc is antagonistic, zinc iron is antagonistic, but copper iron is synergistic. For example, manganese increase do affect iron uh, absorption, but not so strongly. Cobalt uh, uptake will definitely uh, affect the iron, but the iron uptake does not affect the cobalt because there is no arrow in this direction reverse direction. So, molybdenum in the form of sulphides okay, can affect copper. So, more and more molybdenum sulphides and less and less copper being uh, taken. So, these are the kinds of things. So, that means, so it is a very complicated equilibrium or competitive equilibria existing in the body when they are absorbed by the body by the tissue. Okay. So, this is not while eating this is when it is absorbed by the uh, by the intestines when it is absorbed by the blood when it is released to the blood that competition can be understood. Okay. So, I hope you understand that uh, so having too many uh, in the uh, in this particular uh, in a periodic table the elements which are essential and ultra trace element uh, ultra trace uh, elements. So, both these uh, affect the uh, the inter concentrational uh, uh, uptake. So, copper will antagonistically affect the zinc, zinc and iron will antagonistically uh, uh, affect each other that is the kind of uh, uh, thing that we have. So, this is a very interesting kind of a uh, phenomena. So, this leads to internal increase and as well as decrease in this that is why balancing is required. So, that is why you need uh, daily supplements of each of these ion as I mentioned earlier. Okay, let us look at uh, go back and look at what we have seen earlier. So, this is one of the example I have shown that is called the transferrin. Transferrin this is the whole thing is protein this is iron. Now, if I zoom the iron region is here. So, this uh, the blue center is the iron uh, and you have some connectivity the red some connectivity the blue uh, the red etcetera. So, what are these? This is a side chain of the tyrosine, this is a side chain of the tyrosine, this is a side chain of the histidine, this is the side chain of the aspartic. I will explain you the amino acids bit later and then it will become much more clearer what I am trying to say. Okay, so, let us look at uh, the aspects what are the amino acids. In the previous slide I mentioned when you look at the when you focus at the iron center 
there is a tyrosine, two tyrosines, one histidine, one carboxylic which is coming from the aspartic. So, that means the uh, iron ion is, uh, is connected to the phenylate of the tyrosine, phenylate of the tyrosine, nitrogen of the imidazole or the histidine and carboxylic ox, uh, carboxylate oxygen of the aspartic. So, that means amino acids are capable of binding to these metal ion centers. So, let us look at for a while what are the kinds of side chains you have. So, let us look at the side chains. So, we need to uh, we need to look at the side chains because these are the side chains which are left out for binding not the main chain the alpha carboxylic alpha amino these are involved in the uh, uh, peptide bond formation. So, what is left what is left is only the uh, the side chains. So, therefore, let us put some effort in looking at the side chains. So, one of the side chain here alanine is a methyl group a glycine hydrogen isoleucine this is the uh, butyl kind of a, a moiety the leucine uh, butyl, but isobutyl kind of a moiety etcetera. So, these are all non-polar as you know methyl, butyl uh, all these kinds of things are non-polar. And in some amino acids uh, you have uh, the, uh, uh, the SCH3 group and you have uh, a phenyl group you have a propyl group, uh, you have uh, a 5 membered uh, kind of a, a group. So, all of these uh, side chains are nonpolar. So, all of these side chains have no specific affinity or ligating center if one were to consider to bind it to the uh, metal ion. They can only add to the hydrophobicity, but they will not be able to add anything to the uh, anything to the binding part of it. So, one part of the amino acids non-polar amino acids we have looked at and we have looked at their uh, side chains. Uh, let us look at uh, uh, some other amino acids. Uh, so, here we have uh, polar, but they are neutral non-charged neutral means non-charged ok. There is no charge involved in this. So, therefore, uh, you have uh, for example, here uh, here you can see that uh, there is uh, CO NH2 group. Uh, CO is a dipole, NH2 is a dipole. So, therefore, you have a polarity with this. And here CH2SH, SH is a dipole, CS is also a dipole. So, therefore, you have a polarity. And you can see uh, uh, in this CO NH2 and CH2OH. So, these are aspargine, cysteine, glutamine, and uh, uh, the serine. So, these are the uh, 4. Look at on this sign we have CH, CH3 with OH. So, obviously, it is a dipole. So, this is a polar and we have uh, the uh, ring indole kind of a ring again you have a dipole. So, therefore, all these dipoles are uh, leading to the polarity of the molecule. Okay. So, in the previous case uh, we have only the alkyl or aryl groups. So, which gives the hydrophobicity which are non-polar and in this particular case we have a polar in other words we have a, a groups which are a dipole and therefore, dipole gives the polarity. Now, look at a few more which are charged. So, the charge will come a little differently when you are really looking at and these are called acidic type these are called basic type. So, the acidic we have aspartic acid, glutamic acid and tyrosine and basic is we have a histidine, uh, we have a arginine, uh, we have a lysine and these are mainly the uh, charged species and these are non charged, but acidic because you can see carboxylic group and when this carboxylic group loses the proton it becomes carboxylate. It is an excellent group for binding to transition metal ions. In fact, uh, if you have ever studied the coordination chemistry, you would see a lot of examples are coming basically from the carboxylate kind of uh, uh, moieties, a lot of examples will come. And this is glutamic, the difference is only one CH2 group extra in glutamic as compared to aspartic. And here, if you lose this proton, this proton then becomes a phenolate, then you know the phenol. So, these are all acidic protons, acidic uh, groups 
and these on the right side you have the basic groups and the right side you have the basic groups. Okay. And this when it uh, loses the proton it becomes neutral and it will bind happily. If it uh, this also when it loses the proton it can bind happily also here too or they can also bind to negatively charged species. So, this positive can bind to the negatively charged thing. So, they can either bind to the negatively charged species or lose the proton and bind to the metal center either here or here or here. These are called histidine, arginine and lysine. Now, we have seen amino acids based on their side chains one is uh, polar and uh, non-polar okay, uh, side chains where you have a alkyl aryl then we have polar some kind of a dipoles are attached then we have acidic and basic and then we have some with the positively charged where when the proton goes away then they are ready to bind to the system. So, I hope uh, you can uh, have a look at uh, after this uh, lecture these kind of things how they can bind where they can bind etc. We are referring to only the uh, side chain not the main chain part. So, please ignore this because these two are utilized in binding the, to the peptide in formation of the peptide bond. So, having looked at the amino acids this I also said some of the side chains are ligating centers and they can happily bind some of them cannot bind. Let us look at those which can bind. So, here this particular table tells which are those things can bind. Okay. So, uh, uh, this is not for the binding alpha COOH leave it and beta 1 gamma these are coming from aspartic and glutamic. So, they can deprotonate at a pH of 4 to 5 that means when the uh, local pH in the biological system is 4 to 5 they can still be in uh, uh, COOH is converted into CO minus. Okay. So, what, what, what you will find in this is the beta uh, and gamma kind of uh, COOH groups. Okay. So, when the pH is, uh, is 4 to 5 uh, pH, so they uh, are or as a carboxylate and this can uh, very nicely bind bind to the metal center. So, this is a ligand and ligating center this. So, this can come from uh, aspartic, this can come from glutamic uh, acid. So, you have imidazole. So, in the imidazole you have uh, histidine Okay, so, histidine is there and the histidine can lose its NH proton uh, in the 6 to 8 pKa or pH. So, at this stage this is active to bind to the metal centers, this can very nicely bind to the metal centers imidazole. So, and then uh, if you have ammonium ion you require a little bit more basic condition to be removed. So, if you, if you have that you remove you can increase the pH then it will be. So, that means in those regions of the proteins where the pH is around 7.5 to 8 even the ammonium ion can bind because it is no more ammonium ion and it is it is basically amine. So, it is like this any kind of an NH 3 plus can at greater pH can become NH 2 and this can bind bind to metal. So, when uh, pH is greater than or equal to 8, okay. then you have sulfhydryl function, it requires a bit more basic 10 uh, pK is 10, only around 10 this can form the thiolate. So, suppose you can write this as uh, SH, so SH at pH greater than 10 can become S minus. So, this can bind bind to metal ion. Okay. So, as you can see that. Okay. <coughs> Next one is ammonia uh, ion. So, ammonium ion can also lose uh, this uh, proton and then tyrosine phenolic which is around 9 and a half to 10 and a half can bind guanidinium which is a cation 
at pH 12 it will lose the proton and then it will form the uh, in, uh, neutral and neutral can bind to. And then when you have uh, serine or thionine then you have a OH and this OH can be uh, taken out the at 12 to 14 uh, pH. Now in a while I will explain you how one can visualize and understand this. So, what you have seen now is that <coughs> you have seen some of them can be deprotonated uh, 3.5 to 4, some of them bit above 4, 5, some of them around 6 to 8, some of them around 10, some of them around 12, some of them around 12 to 14. So, what do you understand from this? That means to remove the proton from that particular group as you go down from here to here, it is bit difficult which means you require more and more basic condition. And as you go this direction reverse and less and less even at acidic pH the carboxylic can be something like 4 to 5 pH. What is 4 to 5 pH? It is basically a, a, an acid. So, 4 to 5 pH is acidic pH. Even in the acidic pH glutamic and, as, uh, and aspartic acid as long as the pH is greater than 4 or 5, it will it will be uh, present in the form of uh, COO minus is what you should understand. So, go from up uh, from top to bottom from uh, you go from top to bottom in this yeah. So, so it, it is becoming difficult to remove the proton. So, that means what this tells you carboxylates always bind so easily the followed by then the uh, amine uh, centers or imidazole centers then followed by the uh, sulfidyl center uh, or thiolate and then followed by the alcoholic centers. So, alcoholic OH are the uh, weakest uh, systems you require strong base for you to remove that. Okay. So, what we have seen till now is that all those side chains shown in the previous case are capable of binding to the metal ions and therefore, they are called the ligating centers and then you get some uh, coordination kind of a situation. They bind to the coordination coordinating situations into these ones. Okay. So, that means, uh, the aspartic is capable of binding to the metal center, glutamic is capable of binding to the metal center, histidine is capable of binding to the metal center, cysteine is capable of binding to the metal center, lysine is capable of binding to the metal center, tyrosine is capable of binding to the metal center, arginine is capable of binding to the metal center, hydroxyl uh, like serine and trianine, but not at the same pKa, they require different kinds of pKa levels in the uh, system. So, therefore, that is where, uh, so therefore, uh, in the proteins you have a different pockets, the pockets pKa will be different. So, therefore, you can expect the such a kind of things to bind to the metal center. Okay. So, and also there are some additional kind of a motifs uh, we find in the biological systems other than the side chains. For example, these are given here, porphyrin, chlorine, chlorine, this is not nothing to do with the Cl. This chlorine is a term, but this is found uh, for nickel enzymes, some of the nickel enzymes. And then uh, also factor 430, these two are found in the, uh, found for the nickel, chlorine is found for the cobalt and the porphyrin are found for the iron. So, these are mainly for iron enzymes, cobalt enzymes, nickel enzymes, nickel enzymes. Okay. So, therefore, sometimes the metal ion can be bound to these also, these are called special motifs. So, the metal ion is bound to these and this is in turn bound to the protein or peptide. Okay. There are some other things that we see here. So, this is called iron carrier, this is enterochilin, uh, enterobactin, all these kinds of molecules. And such kind of molecules are used by certain microorganisms. These microorganisms require iron for their growth. What they do is they ooze out their uh, this kind of a molecule into the medium, and from the medium they capture the iron ions, and the captured iron ions are brought inside the uh, 
body with this one. Okay. So, that is very interesting kind of thing. So, first of all it oozes out the microorganism and whatever the ion in the surrounding will be captured is capturing is in chemistry is called bound, is called complexation. In chemistry the capture means complexation and this captured or complex one will go back inside the cell. Okay. And there are some uh, molecules which are used by the biological systems as the ion transporters. This particular example here shown is referred as a monensin and this is a sodium bonding protein. It will take uh, in and out in some of the species. Uh, so, as an ionophore you can see typically this has some uh, groups. Okay. So, look at that. So, this has typically some ether kind of oxygens, maximum number of ether kind of oxygens and that is very well suited for sodium binding. I will come to this later bit later stage uh, to explain you why uh, this. Okay. So, let us compile back uh, all these the metal binding motifs uh, in biology aspartic acid. Uh, uh, so, and uh, glutamic acid uh, and these were kind of tyrosines and histidine, orginine, lysine and cysteine and methionine. Then you have uh, serine also here. So, you can see carboxylic kind of things binding, then phenolic OH binding, alcoholic OH binding and then imidazole nitrogen binding and then guanidinium group binding, then amine group binding, then SH group binding and SH group. Uh, uh, this is methionine, this is this is SME. So, therefore, it will not uh, ionize, it will bind to the lone pair. So, methionine case is uh, something different, methionine case it is a different. So, in methionine you have uh, this you have CH2, CH2, SME. And in cysteine, you have uh, CH2SH. Okay. So, this can get ionized, it can form CH2S minus, but this cannot form ionized one. Form. Okay. So, what we have tried to tell you is till now is that uh, uh, is that the ion is uh, present in the metalloprotein and this uh, ion is bound to the uh, the neighbors of the amino acids. For example, you can see here in the transferrin it is bound to two tyrosines one histidine one aspartic or glutamic. In this case uh, is a cloud plastocyanin let us not worry what this is. There are two ions one is a copper other is a zinc copper is bound by one methionine, one cysteine, uh, one uh, uh, the histidine another histidine here. And the zinc is bound by carboxylate, aspartic, aspartic and histidine. So, that means what we are seeing is that in uh, case of these metalloenzymes, the metal portion gives, uh, uh, gives a, uh, gives a uh, kind of a coordination complex. So, what do you understand now? So, the metal ion forms a coordination complex with the side chains of these amino acids. Okay. Let us summarize what we learned in this particular lecture. In this particular lecture we have learned the ion absorption is competitive between different ions and they could be antagonistic, they could be synergistic that is one of the aspect that we have seen. Then the next part we have seen was that these metal ions are bound by the side chains and the side chain deprotonation binding is dependent on the pKa. For carboxylates pKa could be low, for nitrogens little high, for uh, thiol it is a little bit higher and for guanidinium ammonium ions is much higher and pH uh, for alcoholic OH is much higher. So, they can all bind to the metal centers. Uh, so, therefore, the, uh, the uh, amino acids like uh, tyrosine, tryptophan, uh, aspartic, glutamic, cysteine and serine 
uh, all these kinds of amino acids are capable of binding to the uh, metal centers. Therefore, the metal center in metalloproteins is basically a kind of a coordination complex. If you look at the first portion, it is like a coordination complex and so uh, 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 at this stage we will uh, slightly shift and see a broader focus of, uh, of the metalloproteins and metalloenzymes and their presence. Uh, thank you.